There we go. Welcome Ahoy. back, guys, to another episode of Working Title. <laughs> this might just end up staying as uh, the name of the podcast. Working if we title don't, is starting to grow on me. If we, yeah, if we don't have anything better by, like, episode 10, I think we might just keep it as Working Title. Yeah, it fits, I think. Uh, today it's time to get spooky. Today it is. We have um, a nice little list of conspiracy theories that we've each picked out. There it is. There's my um, phone. I have my physical notes because I'm a grown-up. and uh, I have my own. digital notes because I'm an iPad kid. Exactly what I was going to say. Um, do you think that we should do the, the Devil's Advocate, or do you think we should go deep dives into them? I, I think that we'll just... Whole, uh, each one we should spend a fair amount in. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know about full deep dive. Some of these might eventually... Be able to get deep. Well, I guess why not? We have as much time as we need. Go, yeah. go ahead and go into as much detail as you want. Cause I have, I have intensive notes on a couple, and then much smaller notes on ones that uh, I just didn't really want to go that deep into. Mm. Cause there's one in particular, and he's a funny man, but a lot of the things that he does, I can't really, I don't want to speak on on the podcast. <laughs> he's just not a great fella. All right. Do you want to go first? Um. Yeah, I can we start off? I'm gonna start off out of order for my notes. So, uh, I should ex- I should tell the audience here. These are conspiracy theories that we found interesting, and uh, not necessarily ones we believe. Um. So anything we say, you know, take it with a a, a large uh, pinch of salt. Yeah. There's no real uh, evidence that means much to anybody, but all the evidence that I could find for each of these that believers have reported, I wrote down. So, we can start with a really, a, a really fun one that I like a lot, and that's that birds aren't real. Um, Peter, I think his last name is Mickendoe, M-C-I-N-D-O-E. Yeah, that sounds like Mickendoe. He, start, he started a movement... The birds are just government drones. The organization has a real staff, real protests, real billboards, and uh, they held actual protests. They were just um, essentially a large organization that just claimed birds aren't real, and they were trying to <laughs> prove it to everybody. It was later proven, I'd say quote unquote. That it was satire from the start, that the guy didn't believe any of that, uh, that this was some sort of um, example of how Gen Z looks at the world, and how it? he can get a rise out of anything, but in my personal opinion, I do think birds are real, <laughs> but I'm not sure that I agree that it was always satire. Yeah, this sounds like something that like immediately as soon as everyone was like, you're a fucking idiot, why are you doing this? He decided that, that he, he realized... Maybe I'm being an idiot. Yeah, maybe this is stupid. Yeah, I should just say this is all a joke. It was political. <laughs> but, um... I thought it was really funny. I like the idea that all birds are government drones. Because... They send a lot of them into the... The weird... Like, the most odd places. And it really wouldn't surprise me... If the government has, in the past, employed... Like, birds and such as, like, uh... Surveillance means... I'm sure they have at some point. But not not entirely mechanized birds. Not all birds. Hashtag. Hashtag not all birds. Hashtag not all birds. Uh, I would say most birds, though. <laughs> yeah. But all in all, he doesn't really mesh with historical records of birds. Yeah, no. There was no government at times where people had, like, the cave drawings that show birds. Yeah. Um, kind of shut that whole thing down. Well, I guess... Playing a little bit of devil's advocate here, you could just say that, like, at some point in the past, birds were eliminated entirely, and then the government just replaced them. But then it's also, like, how do you exterminate all the different species of bird yeah. and replace them with robots? And if you were introducing a species to the world in the form of drones, you would not make a diverse species of them. You could just say, these are birds. There's one type, they're birds. And send them out. Why do you have to make so many small subspecies and keep going down to eventually create the very diverse bird population that we have? If all it is is just cameras. What about, like, uh, 
Like Darwin's finches and shit. What about flightless birds? <laughs> Do you think that like turkeys are drones? What about like an emu? Penguins. Penguins, yeah. Penguins. <laughs> Alright, uh, since she's here now, I suppose I should introduce our guest for this episode. Um, the illustrious Felfi from twitch.tv slash Felfi. And, um, she is hearing most of these with virgin ears. She doesn't know which ones necessarily we've picked out to talk about. Um, and I'm assuming she does not know the research. So, anything that she's saying will be her blind reaction. Um, do you say some things to just to, I can make sure that you're in the mic's range? And scream? Yeah. Just give a little, a little scream, you know. It's okay. No. No, no, just say no. something. <laughs> no. uh, something. Hold on, can you say it again? I wasn't looking. <laughs> something. Yeah, it's picking you up. That's... In like a half range. Yeah. I'll just raise my voice a little bit. Hold on, I'll, uh... It should have been done during, during like a voice check. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. it, it's reading everything now from what I can tell. Yeah, it's about equidistant. So unless you have anything else, anyone to speak on about birds uh, not being real, then uh, we can move on to the next one. You could take over. Uh, oh sure. Um, so I have decided to look at the uh, Antikythera mechanism, which is Antikythera. Yes, it's an ancient Greek hand-powered. Orrery, described as the oldest known example of an analog computer. It was used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses decades in advance. It can also track the four-year cycle of athletic games, which was similar to the to an Olympiad, the cycle of the ancient Olympian games. That is wild. And this could I could take this into a whole other conspiracy to, of my own that I firmly believe in. Uh, let me let me say something yeah, real quick. You do your thing. I'm not taking over. You can do your uh, thing. You you also have to take into consideration that this would have had to have been handmade, or at least you know hand cast. You yeah, know they they might have made the molds and stuff for it, but they didn't have any sort of industrial uh, calibration or anything. Of. Yeah, that we know of. That we know of. That we know of because kind think of about in, how but... precisely machined that would have had to have been. I mean, just coming up with things of, like, creating the idea of time, like, being able to track where the sun is and such, and using that to calculate How much, what time in the yeah. day it is, and using sundials, and, like, who... I find it really impressive that even small things like that, or large things like the mechanism you are referring to, I just find it so wild that they were able to create these things with as little means as they had, as little of an understanding yeah. as they had on the world. They, they, still, they, still had, they still had math and stuff, so yeah. I guess that's probably how they but put this together. it was much more limited math. They were yeah, still inventing exactly. different maths. Um, here's a, a, a couple of pictures of the mechanism. Okay, I mean, I can see how that could be built by a person. Keep in mind, this is also like modern day pi pictures of this. this. This artifact that is like 2,000 years old. Spicy lady, please do not step on the computer. Spice one, please, please a refrain. Yeah, we have a spicy lady here. Uh, yeah, uh, um, code spice, code spice. Code brown. <laughs> it's too late. Code brown. I didn't choke her out. I just I gave her a little nudge, you know. Are you live and recording? Or no, we're just recording. Okay. Just recording. This is created in the second century BC. So you can edit it out when I say. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This artifact was among uh, wreckage yes. retrieved. Great, from a shipwreck <laughs> off the coast of the Greek island uh, Antikythera in 1901. On the 17th of May 1902, it was identified as containing a gear by archaeologist Valerios Stais. That's the homie. <laughs> the homie v Valerios. Yeah, the homie Valerios. The device. Uh, Housed in the remains of a wooden framed case of uh, uncertain overall size, uh, it was found in one lump, later separated into three main fragments, which are now divided into 82 separate fragments after conservation efforts. Four of these fragments contain gears, while inscriptions are found in many others. The largest gear is approximately 13 centimeters in diameter, uh, and originally had 223 teeth. Think that about is, they have to be so precise to create that, especially at being thirteen centimeters. How yes. precise you have to be to create that many teeth in such a small surface, and have it be accurate. Could you imagine how 
excited you would be to find that as an archaeologist. Bro, I would, I would nut. That'd be ridiculous. Like no question. Finding something that insane, that old, what? you would have. Before that, we probably had no idea they were capable of anything what's, like that. Yeah, what's surprising to me too is that you don't. It's you hear this, and people aren't like super jazzed about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just like people just don't care. Yeah, you don't. You, I, I heard about this for the first time years ago, but this is my first time looking into it in any depth. And it's just very interesting to me that these ancient people somehow had a means of developing an analog computer, uh, you know, of any sense, let alone one that can chart the progress of the moon. That's crazy. We keep on finding different things that we had no idea they were capable of at the time. Like, we think we understand what they were capable of and what they were doing at these times, but we keep discovering new things that we had no idea about. And we just were learning how intelligent they really were. And it makes me wonder if... You've heard of the, the Great Reset. I think I've talked to you about this before. Uh, maybe. The Great Reset. Well, I think the reason that we keep finding more and more advanced things that they were capable of doing... Like, there are times where we found tools and we thought people weren't around them. And this is a big margin of, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, not just a couple thousand. Or, and it makes you wonder if there was a, a whole nother people that went extinct for some odd reason that went a lot farther than we thought they did. And we just don't know because no one from that era of people remain. Because, I mean, it, come, it comes down to the fact that we went mechanical and technological with our advancement as people. Like, throughout our history that we have recorded, we have went down one path of efficiency and mostly mechan- like mechanisms. And the idea that they could have went a completely different way of advancing technology. And they could have gone a lot farther than we think they did, and it reset. That's why we don't know where the, some tools come from, where some peoples come from. We don't understand structures that we find. Uh, have you and heard? Have you heard of the sea peoples? There's a lot of things that talk about that. When you read into this whole theory, a lot of people talk about things relating to that, like how they think Atlantis is real, and it's not like there were sea, like ocean people there, but it was just some. It could have something yeah, to they, do with they're... the apocalypse that took out the people. That were advancing at that time that left that city. The the sea people are uh, thousands of years ago. There was uh, uh, there's recordings of this all throughout like the Mediterranean. Mm-hmm. They were they were called the they're only really referred to as the sea people. Like they don't have a real country name. Yeah. But basically, they were just like um, a group of seafaring folk that were like big time, like a a, a superpower in the area. And uh, it's really crazy to think about that they just just gone, basically vanished to history. Things like that just make me so curious. Like, as we find things, I wonder like what we, how much we can't recover, how much we don't know, and what happened to make it to where we can't recover those things, because like you can't go to the bottom of the ocean. So God knows what crazy things that were created at the time are still sitting there. And we just, we don't have a way of finding it at a certain depth. We can't get there. And there could be so much stuff we had no idea about. I don't know exactly what we're looking at, but I want to put a wiener in it. Oh, no. I said lab-grown, <laughs> lab-grown <laughs> flesh. I don't like that. That's horrifying to me. But back to the, back to the mechanism. Okay. Um, they did, like, in 2008, they did, like, high-res, like, scans of it. Mm-hmm. And they figured out that it likely had 37 meshing bronze gears uh, allowing it to hold on Uh, excuse me allowing it to follow the movements of the sun and the moon through the zodiac to predict eclipses and to model the irregular orbit of the moon Uh, this motion was studied in the 2nd century BC by astronomer astronomer Hipparchus of Rhodes and is speculated Hipparchus, maybe. Hipparchus. Hipparchus. 
of Rhodes, and it's speculated that he may have uh, consulted in the machine's construction. Um, and that is crazy. There's speculation that the, a portion of the mechanism is missing that also calculated the position of the five classical planets. Um, that's really crazy. If they found evidence of the rest of that, that would be insane. If and you could find out how much stuff they were actually finding ways to track and understand. Alright, so... There have been a few different estimates for the, the date of the device itself. Between anywhere from, like, 87 BC to 205 BC seems to be, like, the guesses. Back in the day, yeah. Yeah, but it, all that we know for sure is that it was made before the shipwreck, which has been dated between 70 and 60 BC. Okay. It's still insane that we found that. Yes. <laughs> it's ridiculous that that's, we found that. That's almost a... At the most, that is 200 years before Christ. That's a long time ago, man. Huh? Yeah, that <laughs> wasn't even that's, thought of. That's dude. insane. <laughs> that's. Hmm. Researchers proposed that the initial calibration date of the machine could have been uh, the 23rd of December, 178 BC. They're pushing it. <laughs> To tell me what month it was, I don't know. Yeah, and I, feel I, like I, you're, you're I don't know if you here. can get that close. You're reaching on the date. No one knows what day that was made. <laughs> they start pulling uh, out the times, I'm gonna freak out. Other experts uh, propose 204 BC as the more likely calibration date. Machines with similar complexity did not appear again until the astronomical clocks of uh, Richard of Wallingford and Giovanni de Dondi in the 14th century. So that's how okay. anachronistic this is. This was literally 1,400, uh, more than that, but at least 1,600 years ahead of its time. That is, that's <clears throat> part of why I believe partially in that reset. Because it's weird that if that existed that long ago, the fact that we have we weren't building on it by that point, that we rediscovered it, and then we rediscovered that we had already known that at a later date. I think I heard of the period of the pyramids being in that. Theory. That also goes with it because I mean, it it would take a lot of people, and they were skilled laborers, not slaves. Yeah. And when you think about the resources that you need to pay, it would be different if it was slaves. I'd believe it more because you can have two hundred slaves if you just catch two hundred people. You have to pay a very you know, lucrative Regard wage to even, those people. Even if, if you, you have, have 400 slaves. people a slab, and you're paying them all whatever currency was at the time, at a reasonable rate, because those were skilled architects, there's not a shot that would have been sustainable to build enough pyramids. Especially in the perfect placement that they did. And it still be around at this point without weathering to a certain degree that you can't tell what it is. People, you still don't know what's inside of them. These weren't just sand people that do nothing, that did nothing. Like, these were Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we just have, like, x-ray scans. I don't think that anyone's actually been inside of the pyramids, but you can... If Probably people like in the comments scans. can collect me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Collect you. Yeah, because they can collect me. They can <laughs> abduct me off the streets. <laughs> um, but in the museum in which it is stored, the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, there are... Um, which Athens? Uh, uh, the, Greece. <laughs> <laughs> there are a number of replicas that, that have been made to, to show how it might have looked and worked. That's crazy to me. That, it's insane that they, could even, that, that they could even speculate as to what the rest of it would look like. The fact that we've collected enough artifacts from the time. Yeah, we have, I think know it, a, a it seems that we have most of it. Look at that. I'm not sure how intact that's supposed to be, but it does look, it looks quite damaged. It looks But good. still. I mean, for like how, how old it is. Bronze construction, baby. Start building houses out of bronze. Well, another thing is too is um, a, going back to the Great Reset. We have had several, you know, we we know through history that societies tend to rise and fall, and one of the hardest ones was the Bronze Age collapse, which happened uh, early BC days. Let me see if I can find a good date. Early BC days. It's the collapse of the Bronze Age. Yeah, the Bronze Age. Bronze Age. Bronze. Le LeBron. Yeah, LeBron. He collapsed. The era. To, like, collapse. That'll never end. Um, <laughs> between, um, uh, 1200 and 1150 BC 
is is the Bronze Age collapse. So basically, most of the great societies in that time just like fell apart, and we don't know why. It's just because they suck. It could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, they just didn't. Obviously, you know, <laughs> didn't a, understand. A theory is probably you know like disease or something like that. Yeah. Or, small you know, fox to three of them, the, the, whole, fucking, the whole squad's done. It could have been the fucking sea people, for all we know. Just waging war, going out through... It looked like, because it was all around the Mediterranean. That's where all the, uh, the big civilizations were at the time. And it's uh, entirely possible it could have been, like, the sea people or something just fucking... I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> wiping a swath through these guys. You know how happy I'd be if we saw cave drawings of sea people fighting cavemen? Well, they're, they're not... Like, ocean folk. They're just called the sea people because that's where they dwelled. They're not, like, fishmen. Well, I want to see fishmen. fishmen. You, want, you, want, you want to be fishmen? You I want to see, see fishmen? I see oh, I okay. Fishmen. Oh, okay. A likely story. So that's that's about the, um, the mechanism. And I just thought that that was really interesting. That is a very neat mechanism. I remember, like I said, I remember hearing about it years ago, but not in any great detail. I have... I think I figured out what order I'm going to go in this one because one can lead to the other and then the other one's stupid, the other one's an OG. So I'm going to mm-hmm. go stupid for my second one as well as my first one. As the one birds aren't real and now I'm going chemtrails. I love this one. That uh, airplanes, when they leave, you know, water condensation trails behind as they fly, you can see them. Uh, jet lines as some people will like to call them. Um... The idea that the government are putting chemicals in these trails um, for biological warfare, population control, or geoengineering of weather control. And it claims that 26, some studies from 2016 uh, debunked this idea. You know, shocker. But the reason that I picked this one is because I actually know somebody who is hellbent that these are trails of chemicals being left by the government and that it started with Richard Nixon. And the whole idea, I guess, was that after after Watergate, he had enough power left in the government to um, essentially tell all airliners what they can and can't release out of the back of their jets. And that he put... Uh, some, I'm not, I don't remember, I haven't been in contact with this person in a bit, <laughs> what um, cocktail of chemicals that he was putting in there to kill the American people before he had to leave office. And when I saw this, it reminded me of him and it made me happy, because him sitting there explaining the story to me a thousand times is one of my favorite memories. Um... He believes that Richard Nixon started it, and then every politician since thought it was a good idea, and they've changed the, the meaning instead of trying to kill the American people to make them dumber. And then they started putting fluoride in the water, and he believes that that is part of the same Oh, the same I, think I, I think plan. I know who you're talking about. The fluoride triggered the memory. The fluoride. The fluoride always triggers it. Um, uh, was this perhaps a teacher at school? Yes. Yep, alright. teacher? Oh, yeah. Th- we won't disclose his name, <laughs> but we both know who it is. And it's... <laughs> Floyd and chemtrails were all I learned in that class. <laughs> it's, for some reason, this man was a very avid, like, conspiracy theorist, even though he was a, like, a, a PE teacher. <laughs> he was a, he was a health and PE teacher. You're a really old guy? <laughs> Yeah, he, he was I can't. I can't even imagine he, this. No, no, no. I remember it once. That. He was. He was talking about. Uh, I remember. He was talking about fluoride to my class once because he was talking about uh, properly brushing your teeth <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And he was like, "Make sure you don't. You get unfluorinated toothpaste." He, he gave us he actually like, a list uh, of toothpaste that he liked, and that we should buy. And he gave us extra credit if he found if he saw a picture that we had that toothpaste. That's great. I don't know if I'm thinking of the same teacher. Well, you went. Yeah, you were here for... You moved here in 7th grade. Oh, I was younger? No. Mm-hmm. No, because you were a year older than me, and I, I had him, I think. Well, what year? So, uh... Was, <laughs> I can't okay, remember what fine. year. He was, an, he was an older guy. He had a big, silly nose. Bald. Oh, no, it's okay. I feel like All right. I'm not going to go that far, but... 
just seeing this reminded me of him and how he believed that it all started with Nixon. But he says that he voted for Nixon. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so man. That's really all I have on that one. It was just a funny memory that I, I got whenever I was looking through my list of ideas. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Do you believe it? In chemtrails? Yeah, do you think it's real? Maybe in some extent. Maybe to some put, extent. Can you put chemicals in the water that turn the frogs? Yeah. I don't know about all that. Fluoride? Does I, fluoride make frogs? I, I, yeah? think, I think if you look at um, like the history of warfare, I would not put it past the government to, to have done it in foreign <laughs> places. Yeah, they're assholes. I, um, I was listening to a video the other day about um, like minor mistakes in history. That led to, like, huge, horrible things. Okay. Like, um, how some dude who... Alright, this is all... The, the, this guy invented canned food. Yes. Right, he was a French guy. And he tried to sell it to the Napoleonic government, but the French were assholes and they didn't like the idea. <laughs> like, no, dude. So he went to the British, and the British were like, you know what... There might be something to this. Yeah, maybe and so, in in the invention of canned food, he revolutionized the way that the Royal Navy, the most powerful navy in the world at the time, mm -hmm. was able to store and keep food. Because the number one uh, cause of death in sailors was malnutrition. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, you know, you could only have, like, salted shit and uh, the gross old alcohol. So with the advent of canned foods, it really... Excuse me. Brought in the horizons of what they could do. And so it made the best navy in the world even better. Uh, it also led to a... Um, there was a, a dude... I can't remember what his name was, but he was like a pirate, basically. Pirate. And he, he, would, he would steal... So Peru had like a monopoly okay. on on these seeds that you use like it's you use these seeds to plant a tree that is like a foundational process of making rubber. Yeah, it's a rubber tree. Yeah. Rubber and, tree seeds. And uh, in Peru they had they had this like down. This was like the only place you could find these seeds. And these guys they were like, "Well, I want to take these to Southeast Asia." Where I can start, like, plantations and stuff, and, and have cheaper labor. So that's what he did. He skirted around customs, using canned food to be able to get around it. And so, um, in doing so, he, he was able to bring the rubber seeds over to Southeast Asia. Right. And also, um, therefore, like, Peru and a harder time keeping up. I can't remember which side of it developed this, but they they were really eager to get over on the other side. And so they started mixing different chemicals with the li liquid rubber mixture to be mm -hmm. able to make them better. Until they found, uh, until they mixed it with gasoline and created mm -hmm. napalm. <laughs> there you go. And it's crazy going back to see these lines in history that, like, converge. Oh, yeah. It's just, like, seemingly unrelated so every, every napalm-related incident we can blame Peru for. We could we could blame that French fuck for. The French fuck? Yeah, because he was the one who created the canned food to make the sailors, to let the sailors the, get yeah. over and skirt uh, customs. So we can blame everything on French people. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, but that was a really interesting video. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find the link to the video and, mm -hmm. and link it yeah. below. But it was really cool. I prefer uh, not to give him credit. <laughs> he wasn't French, he was British. Well, okay, it's not French. The dude who made the video was British. Um, if he was French, I would have just, you know... Cried? Claim the information as mine. <laughs> I didn't say it, you just read it for me. It was me. It was me all along. It was me, Austin. It was me, Austin. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be jumping around here a little bit. I have a I have a list that is numbered 1 through 4. 
but I'm going right to number four, which is... So I didn't have a fourth subject until right before we recorded. So I had a, an iceberg saved, and I was like, I will zoom in, and I will look into whatever topic I see first. Excuse me. The topic was bacterial humanity. So, I'm still intrigued as to what the fuck that means. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just an overall theory that humans and life in general is just an advanced form of bacteria. And they were just grown on a, a, a giant petri dish. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about all that, but um, I think it comes from a Joe Rogan tyrant, t- tirade that he went on a, uh, once, and I have the whole transcript of it right here. Feel free. I think human beings are just a very complicated form of bacteria. I think if you look at the Earth as a living organism, uh, and who's to say it's not some sort of super organism? It's clearly a host for life, and we're considered a living organism, and we're a host for life. There's more E. coli living in your gut than there have been humans on Earth. There's bacteria around you. Uh, co- I'm sorry, there's bacteria constantly around you. And your body is fighting off that bacteria until your body grows old and dies. And then it doesn't fight anymore. That bacteria just eats your body. That's what it's there for. If you looked at the Earth as a living organism, you're flying into L.A. Uh, and as you're passing all these beautiful mountains, uh, and you see the ocean ahead, it all looks so natural and beautiful. And then when you see LA, you think, well, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a growth. It's a cancer. It's big. It's brown. It stinks. Smoke's coming out of it, and it gets bigger every year. And it doesn't matter what you do. It's going to keep going. Uh, you could knock it down with a hurricane, and it just rebuilds. Light it on fire, it rebuilds. If you were an intelligent life form from another planet... Uh... Sorry, I lost you read so thought. much that you went brain dead. <laughs> if you were an intelligent life form from another planet, you wouldn't see individual people. You wouldn't see housekeepers and limo drivers and stand-up comedians. You wouldn't see that. You would see mold on a sandwich. I think if you look at us subjectively, the way we've always been, it doesn't matter how much access to info we have. It doesn't matter how much technological innovation we have. We're always going to destroy the Earth. Because I think, one way or another, that's what we're supposed to do. That's our purpose here on Earth. Uh, we are here to fuck shit up. I think we're here to eat the sandwich. Here to eat the sandwich. That's Joe Rogan. That's a true prophet right there. Then start over. Reset. Yeah, the great reset. <laughs> and Joe Rogan agrees with that theory. And uh, a man that I cannot remember the name of. Two men, but one man mainly. He went on that podcast... And talked about the whole thing and made a documentary of it, and it was really good, called Ancient Apocalypse. But uh, I can't remember the name of, of the of the particular boy. They're a real odd squad. But he does have a way of explaining things that make me kind of understand what he's saying. Yeah, he's, all, at I the mean, same like, time, it's pretty galaxy-brained. Yeah. <laughs> it's I mean, pretty silly. If I looked at, like, an anthill... I don't think of individual worker ants and what they do. Yeah, like, I get, I that's get what he, I, I understand what he's you saying. Look at termites, you're like that's termites. They're destroying the wood. That's just, what they do. To me, it sounds like, yeah. I mean, I can understand. I don't think that humanity has been designated a purpose from some divine source. No. But I think if there, it is definitely a something that you would notice. It, it does seem that humans are pretty good at fucking up the earth. You know, we're really good at fucking everything up. Most yeah. things we fuck up. And some of the times we fuck up, we end up with napalm. I mean, it's just kind of... <laughs> yeah, the evolution that's of terrifying. That we have where we just fuck things up and it's like, ah, sometimes it works, sometimes we die. You know, cows are going to burp. It's yeah. kind of our fault. We <laughs> fucked it up again. Um, and soon we'll have polar bears with gills and penguins that fly. <laughs> Thanks to not only the chemtrails, but also to the ice caps melting. And hopefully California floats away. Hopefully yeah. Florida does too. Yeah, we can take both. <laughs> oh, I feel Jesus. like I feel like sometimes it's just in my nature to go devil's advocate on everything that happens. Well, I, I like do. That. I, I feel like it's a good, I feel like if all these were true, I'd have a lot of fun. Let it swim. Let it swim. I think if I think if um if birds weren't real, we didn't have canned food. 
and we were all bacteria, life would be better. The old adage, ignorance is bliss, comes to mind. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Um, I think it's your turn. It is my turn. I think I'm gonna go on the fun little, uh, the fun little time. We're gonna talk about Barack fun. now. Yeah, uh, Ro- what a good, what a Ro- good sequence of events. Roswell is fun, but I really want to get into this Obama one, and it starts out super tame, uh, and I've had some dispute over this one as well. Um, and then it goes crazy. And the way I wrote it, literally, it says Obama, last name with a question mark, birth. Uh, uh, People did not believe that Barack Obama was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, as he claimed, but rather in Kenya, as his father was. Uh, And this caused a... It's way bigger than it sounds. There was a lot of stuff going on. I I remember this. He had to provide papers and legal documents claiming that he was born American. But people Wasn't saying, Trump like really gung ho about that too? Yeah, he, he provided him. <laughs> but he, um, a lot of people's argument was that he was conceived outside of the United States and then born, like brought over onto U.S. soil a very late trimester and then born. Um, which I don't think. I mean, I don't think that matters. I think the way that it actually works is that is if you are born you here, are, then you're born wherever here. Wherever you are shot out of your mother yeah, is where uh, is where you're from. But also, Obama is a shapeshifter. He is a reptile. <laughs> All right? And David Icke knows a thing or two about that. Yeah, we uh, David Icke is one of our favorite people here. Oh, I wouldn't... <laughs> the more I read about it, I would not say that. David um, Ike. David Ike is uh, one you ever of the, heard the protocols of the elders of Zion. <laughs> David Ike is one of the more interesting people we know here. We know here. Come on out, David. Um, so why don't you take a seat? Yeah, why don't you why don't take a seat? <laughs> but um, I read a lot about David Ike and his idea that he was like. Claimed by God to be the messenger to the world oh, no. about how the world was going to end, and how there was this master race of uh, reptile people who bred with non-reptilian humans and created a shape-shifting humanoid reptile that is now the Illuminati or the elite. Um, that is one, before one... he created the protocols of the Elders of Zion, which is an anti-Semitic organization <laughs> that he runs, where what? they are the reptiles. Um, but we're not oh, going to go into no. that one. The one thing I do notice, though, is a common theme in these conspiracy theories. It's always the elite. The elite. Uh, and I, you have a problem? Blame it on, uh, blame it on, like, Obama. Uh, yeah, blame it on Obama. I blame everything on Obama. Every time <laughs> anything to, goes wrong. Granted, to some extent, you know, like, Obama. like with, like, Epstein stuff, you know, obviously, it's hard to deny that there were global, uh, like, you know, powers. You know, Tom Hanks was there. Yeah, and celebrities and shit. But, like, I don't know if they were doing fucking, like, rituals to the lizard god or something like that. No, I think they were having sex with children. Uh, yes, yeah, something much more mundane. And I'm wondering if... Evil. Much more Evil. Mundane. Evil. Yeah. Yes. Much more acceptable. Much more, I'm not, <laughs> I didn't say acceptable. I said mundane. Uh, something that can actually Tom happen. H- you think Tom Hanks did anything with the, with the children there? Uh, I really hope not. Now we moved to Greece. Where they legalized, uh, minor stuff. Oh but anyways, <laughs> uh, Woody from Toy Story is a pedophile, isn't he? Listen, at least he's not Tim Allen. He said the N word. <laughs> yeah. Several times. I don't even want to debate which one of those is the worst thing to do. I don't. Yeah, no. It's... I don't want to debate this anymore. We're not gonna do that. We're back oh, to the reptilians, back, guys. Back to, back to reptilians. <laughs> um, I think Barack Obama. Me too. Looks kind of like a reptile. Look at his funny ears. Look at... <laughs> <laughs> Big ears, reptile. Uh, Michelle, uh, I'm with, a lizard man. I work with a guy who, um, he's very hell-bent that Hillary Clinton is a robot. And the real Hillary Clinton died a long time ago. And that you can see people pull the strings and press the buttons and stuff. You watch videos <laughs> close. C-3PO. But there's a one time where she collapsed in front of a van. And as soon as you'll see her right arm go up, as a guy right behind her happens to move his left hand down as if he's pulling something. And then as soon as someone taps a barricade, she collapses to the ground. And then then police circle that barricade. And then, you know, they, they get rid of the 
uh, of the woman. And he was telling me this while I was, like, trying to load a truck, but he was... <laughs> and it was very interesting because he was talking me through a video that he was not watching with time stamps. Like, what... He had seen this video second, so many times. To the second in the video, where does did he in? Did he show you this video? What the heck? Uh, I didn't let him. <laughs> I didn't care. I was like, I was trying to work. <laughs> it was a busy day. I had things to do. <laughs> and, he, and the janitor was trying to show me how, uh, how Hillary Clinton had died a lot. He's, he's, he's in the similar boat with um, the Paul McCartney. I, knew, I was died, about to bring that up. Where he, he, he quote unquote, he, he passed away. I, th- I think that's really, really funny. He because did, celebrities he do less, die. He did get marginally less ugly than he was before. Yeah. But I think it's just because he's rich and old. Uh, yeah. I, think, I do think it's really funny, though, how... St- like, what? What about Kurt Cobain? Why didn't they fake? Why didn't they have a fake Kurt? It would have been great to have a fake Kurt. I would have loved to be ignorant and just think. Teenage sex has paid off well. Now I'm born alone. That's me. Yeah, that's you. I'm, I'm the new Kurt. See, this is Kurt Cobain, ladies and gentlemen. Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Kurt, 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 Kurt Cobain, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! So yeah. Kurt, so Curtis. Fucks up with you, man. Cheese okay. <laughs> knife is that? That's um, what? the Velociraptor kind. <laughs> Velociraptor. Yeah. Don't fucking say that. You know what Velociraptors well, not, are, right? Say, don't fucking say that. They're lizards. Do not say that. Barack Obama's a Velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have I have things I can use to prove. All right. That Barack Obama. So is Hillary's a robot. Obama's a Velociraptor. Hillary's a robot. I do think it's really funny how you never hear any of these things about Republicans. Well, it's because Republicans get bored and make up things about (laughs) Obama. (laughs) (laughs) Liberals are so busy trying to defend that their their president is not a robot. Yeah, they're trying to let you know. uh, Yeah, they're trying so hard to defend it, they don't have time to say that 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 Trump's like a troll. Yeah, that Trump's like a troll. I, th- <laughs> I think goblins are real, and I think he's one of them. Uh, I am not very strongly opinionated on no, any yeah, me neither. Party. I, sh- I should say that real quick. I just it's just a pattern I there, notice. There, there will be f- there will be fun made of every side. As I'm talking about Obama being a reptile, Trump's a goblin. And it's just how it goes. But Barack Obama, whatever whatever Obama's last name is, he was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. Islands are often the target of nuclear tests. Those oceans in which Hawaii is in were used for nuclear tests. I think that that drew in the elite life form. They were like, hey, something's goofy here. What's going on here? Barack Obama's mom was fucked by a lizard man. And out came little Obama. Alright? And he came out in Honolulu, Hawaii. Not Kenya. Because, I know, why would lizard people want to This is, this is your Kenya? hybrid theory? I think David Icke had something to do with this, too, and I'll talk about that, too. Okay. I think that David Icke saw something in um, Miss o- Mrs. Obama, you know? Do you think uh, David Icke is the lizard man that impregnated her? I think... I think... I think that Obama. Well, the real question here is, where where does the African-American element come in? Or is he shape-shifting to be? But yeah. He, he, well, oh, well, no. He can't... He can't just be... The, the whole mystique of Obama... Was that he didn't know where he was from. He knew where he was from, and he represented a percentage of people that have never had a president. There's never a person in power that had been in the same position in which Obama was born into in the family that he was raised in. Uh, it gave him an edge to relate to Sorry. to the people of Honolulu. All right. He just he, he Oh, did you find it? <laughs> but show us, done. show us it after the podcast. Okay. But actually, he, uh, no. Once he gets done talking, show us it. I have to see this. But I think that David Ike oh. wanted. He thought he thought you know Mrs. Obama. She's like, damn, you know, shoddy, bad, and whatnot. Whatever David Ike would say. And in his powerful way of speech, he convinced her, as a lizard man, that this is that the end of the world is coming. All right, like this is it. <laughs> Tidal waves and earthquakes, it? man. It's gonna get bad, and we already know that you're not um, anti-Semitic enough to join the, the elders of Zion. <laughs> but 
we need to have a baby. And she was like, <laughs> she's like, well, you know, whatever. And she fucked David Icke. <laughs> I mean, I guess. And Maybe then, one it, child it, could survive the apocalypse. This is all take place in Kenya. And then uh, two weeks later, because it's a lizard. She, she, oh, she, yeah, she, the she quick lay, incubation. She, she lays the egg a week later. One week later, the beaked small Obama comes out. <laughs> He never looked like a baby. He always looked like Barack Obama, just smart, just proportionally smaller. <laughs> His ears did not change <laughs> since he was born. His ears came Dumbo. out full sized, and he, uh, you know, he dug his way out of the egg. And David like tried to stomp him out, but it wouldn't work. Uh, Father Obama came into play. Pa- father pa- Obama. Papa Obama, his Papa actual Obama. Kenyan father, yeah. came in and he he struck David Icke. Much much he, like much like Jesus taking uh, having a uh, a surrogate father to go along with his real one. Yeah, it's not only David Icke, but it's also some dude from Kenya. Yeah, yeah, this is great. But uh, Senior Obama came in to uh, assault David Icke and claimed this son as his own. With his wife, Mrs. Obama. And, uh, he grew up knowing about the elite. Mr. Mr. Young Obama grew up in his political prime knowing about the elite, including Robot Hillary. And he played to that power. The elite loved him, because he's one of them. He's a lizard person. All the rich people loved him. And you could see that if you look back at old interviews and... If you come to his press conferences, there's always a couple, you know, very wealthy celebrities, because they're also lizards, all impregnated by David Icke. Oh, no. Uh, and I think Obama's kids might also, uh, I think Obama was impregnated by David Icke. And I do think that Michelle Obama was also impregnated by David Icke. I think that those kids are going to grow up to be political powerhouses that will shapeshift to and from whatever they need to be. Just as Obama has when he pretended to be Donald Trump and won the election, <laughs> and I think that uh, I think that Kanye is the only one that isn't a reptile. That's why he's making so many mistakes. That's why he's getting himself in so much trouble because he doesn't have the elite. The telling reptilian him. media everyone else, everyone is else twisting has, his motive. Everyone else has no, no, no. He he's a bad person and he means what he says. I think that because he's the only one that is non-reptile, the rest of them all know what to say. You know exactly yeah. what to say. He is dumb. He's not informed, and he's freaking out, because he sees everyone else teleporting around him, and he doesn't understand what's happening. You know, Barack Obama turns into a... Go- turns All he into knows elephant. is fish dicks. All he knows is fish dick, and he doesn't like uh, doesn't like certain types of people, and, you know, he, he's not informed by the hive mind. He just makes his own stupid decisions on his own and gets himself in trouble. And that is the end of my conspiracy. All right. All right, so I want to talk for a moment about, um, I guess could be somewhat rip, uh, related to the Reptilians. Yeah. Um, the Denver International Airport. Okay. Now, there's there's a lot of strangeness around the Denver International Airport for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to start out with, uh, I want to show you the statue in front of the Denver International Airport. The statue of Steve-O? No, it's a statue of a horse. Yeah, I'm not oh. Um, well, it's pretty easy to look up online. The horse is here. So, this is the statue. Okay, it is yeah. a It is a blue horse rearing up on its hind legs with red eyes. You thought I'd consider a bronco. And at night, the, uh, <coughs> the horse's eyes glow. That's a bit odd. That's yeah, that's a bronco. That's yeah. Something I would okay. do. Yeah, every time every horse I've ever owned would do that at night sometimes. It's uh, just it's like a mating. The call. locals call it Blucifer. Blucifer. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, white it, people. It's officially just called Mustang. So it's not even a Bronco. It's not it's a Mustang, damn. Well I thought Denver. Yeah. Damn. Bronco would make a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, you know, that would make sense. That would. But whatever. Especially considering um uh I'm pretty sure yeah. It opened in 95. 95, yeah. So that would have that been was a, well into their their years as the Denver Broncos. Yeah, that would, it would make a lot more sense than to be a Mustang. But, you know, whatever. Lucifer can be whatever he wants to be. So there's also a lot of really weird artwork that um, that is posted on the inside. And, uh... 
I'll see if I can't find some of these. I'll see if I can find them in sequence. Because I think there's three pieces that are all somewhat connected. Do you think that the soul of Kurt Cobain is trapped inside of Kanye West and he's doing this to troll Kanye? <laughs> One can only hope. Like, he's in there just being a little troublemaker, as usual. Yeah, a little stinker. Making Kanye say things, and he's like, no. No, I didn't say that. No. So here is one piece of art from the Denver International Airport. That's so strange. Is that a gay Nazi? It's, it's, uh... It looks as though it's a gay it, Nazi. It appears to be... The one that we're looking at appears to be a Nazi clad... What are you doing? Let, let me zoo it. Let me do it for you. Zoom it. Let me zoo. Right. <laughs> it appears to be... It is not overtly a Nazi. It looks pretty Nazi. It, it looks pretty Nazi. It's a, a man clad in orange with a gas mask and a scimitar slashing at a couple of, like, children who are cowering. And there's, like, a rainbow going over the top. This is... It's bizarre. I like this guy that's just... <laughs> it's kind of strange. And there's it. there's also like a ruins of a society around him. There's, there's like weeping women. children. Yeah, there's weeping children. They all seem to be in poverty and anguish. Very strange. Very then there's strange this one, one too. What's that one? What the hell's going on? There seems to be a Native American woman holding like a a, a baby lizard thing. Wait, let me David Ike. That's actually Mrs. Obama carrying her lizard her lizard son, fresh out. You yeah. see that? It looks like a statue. A statue? Like a, st a little. I, I think that's I think that's Miss Obama holding but, her lizard. But son. anyways, here is like a piece. It's got like um, a whole bunch of like dead wildlife. There's like a bunch of grand trees that are on fire. There's a nice little bison sitting in the corner. Yeah, there's a there's that's a bird cool. in like an invisible box. Bird box. It says Quetzal on it. The box does. Quetzal. And there's a bunch of like anguished children here, oh marveling gosh, at the the enshrouded wildlife. It's because just, it's, I'm it's, assuming it's it's like a like a like a like a taxidermied specimen that that is the glassed animals. It is so strange. It's such a strange thing to have. And then in let an me show airport. you. Let me show you the third one. This isn't like the an third art one is a sprawling mural. And it's a bunch of like children, and all sorts of different environments, and they're all just. It's like tons of cultures hanging out, dancing around an orb, like celebrating. Yeah. It looks. It looks to be an orb. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to see if there's any other ones. There's such a strange. Group I think that. Of I think that that's it. That they choose to display. All right, look at this. This is, is huge. Why would they do that? I have no that idea is why so they put that in an airport. Odd. I kind of just wonder if it's a weird place. And to go on, the Denver International Airport was, uh, I believe, originally planned to be a huge, massive, sprawling structure, but they ran like way over budget, so they couldn't fully complete it. But it was originally planned to have a series of underground tunnels. Underground tunnels. What? what and mean, rail and with like for? a connected railroad system, presumably for like transportation, transportation of like resources and stuff. But supposedly they were never finished. But there are still some remnants of the tunnels. They have little catacombs hanging out under the Denver International Airport. This with huge, all those really this strange imagery. Plant. Yeah. The I'll see if I can't find... What's their infatuation with Native American people in, in Denver? It seems like know. that's a common theme. Except for the Nazi. But people t people take it as a sign of like the plan of what is to come with the New World Order. That's wiping out like society. That. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. Of, if you look like at a lot of conspiracy that. theories, the New World Order is a, a common occurrence. Whether it be reptilians or Satanists or... Liberals. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. it's... The elite. It's, uh, New World Order, liberals. But this is what it looks like. It's so abstract. And unnecessary. Why like, couldn't they have just made a big brick building and <laughs> sent planes out? 
I don't really I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There, it, it also says... Um, let me see if I can find... There's a placard. Is there something off, I guess, about the choice of mural? Like, the things that they decided to put on the walls don't really mesh with what they do as an airport. <laughs> it's just, like, it, it's a bunch of strange... It's about, like, nature. Yeah, it's about, it's about like, nature unexpl- and... And the ruination of the world. Yeah. Didn't the nature one say, like, in memory of? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's so it, strange. <laughs> Nature's gone. I could see that being in, you know, maybe a large art collection or a museum of sorts. There's a placard. Why I can't, would that I can't be seem to in find the it. Denver Oh, yeah, it, it, it says all over it that it was founded by the, um, the Masons. Which is, of course, also a huge factor in many conspiracy theories yeah, the, about here. the Freemasons. Yes, oh, wow. yeah, yes. We, I will talk. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about that for a split second because that is it is insane to me. So first off, the Mason Building was right across, literally right across the street from a an elementary school. Yeah, elementary school. Directly and then, the after it was decommissioned, they turned it into a church. That is, it's a strange... That, that feels really weird. I don't personally believe in any of the weird shit people say about the Masons, but that's weird what to me. What did you say it was before a church? It was a Mason building. Like, where that's where they would go to meet. Oh. Um. Another weird thing that just occurred to me. My dad had uh, a friend of his who was... A mason, and he moved out to Colorado. No to less. The, to, <laughs> that, that is that is really a strange connection going on there. Yeah, it's just it's just something that I, think I a just lot of masons in Colorado. I just I just remembered off the top of my head. Um. Oh yeah, it also says it was. Um. So the plaque is from March nineteenth, nineteen ninety four, and it says it's from the New World Airport Commission. Um. Oh. Which, as far as like I can tell, isn't isn't really a real thing. It's uh, it, I don't know. It, it's such a complicated idea. It's so. I don't There's know why they so just many leave it different at being a normal airport. There right. To be some meaning. There's so some, many different weird components to coming together. Someone had something to say in choosing the art that went in there. The art. There was something going on deeper than what the airport wants you to think it means. Because that's not normal airport shit. No. That's not like <laughs> that's not like locations. Like, oh, look where you so, can be. And these like, two, <laughs> these two didn't have any idea that I was going to be talking about the DIA or anything about <laughs> its strangeness. They are hearing this for the first time. I haven't talked to them about this at all. The They're airport? no you two. You two here. I'm I haven't talked to you airport. about the airport. But it is you did very today. A little bit. Yeah. I didn't tell you about the artwork. I didn't show you the artwork. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even tell you about the placard. But that to me that is just so weird. Yeah, it's not I, what you'd expect to see walking in there. I'd feel like if I walked in there, I'd feel like I walked into the wrong building. I'd look at I the outside. I don't feel like I walked into a fucking like alternate reality like government I'm a, I'd building. Feel like a mason. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm seeing things that I'm not supposed to see. Uh, and it, no one else is supposed to see it, either. I actually first heard about this uh, a long time ago from a... Do you know the comic book dudes I would watch? Like Comic Storian and that yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. They had a They had a podcast for a long time. Um, I think that they, they either archived the videos or something because I can't find them. But they... Um, they had this thing called the Conspiracast where they would talk about like these conspiracies and they would have... At the time, they all lived in Colorado. And so they were like, have you ever been there? And then they would talk about it. And I was like, how have I not heard of this? How have I not heard that this airport is so to. weird? I think that you're not supposed to hear about it. That's why their podcasts are gone. Oh, no, because they have... <laughs> got taken down by David Icke. <laughs> I, th- I think it was uh, just because the content didn't fit the channel. Because oh. he, he, ended up opening another, he ended up opening another channel all about stuff like that. And just um, wait till he's reported missing. <laughs> you know, that might be it. But that's just, it's so strange to me. All the different shit that goes into that. It's like, it almost feels like it was meant to draw questions. 
Yeah. But could, at the, it, at it the same time, that. it's not like it's the type of questions that I would want to use this airport for. Yeah. I don't want to fly on an airline that has apocalyptic paintings and a horse that has <laughs> glowing eyes on it. Yeah, it makes me question what motives are behind this place. It doesn't seem like... I don't know, that means They're nothing. They're going to take you somewhere else. They're going to take yeah, you Yeah, it feels like I'm, I'm not going to be landing in fucking Kansas. <laughs> yeah, this isn't Kansas. This is hell. <laughs> I'm going Where to the, the ninth fuck? circle, baby. Yeah. <laughs> this is strange. Like, I feel like if I, if I had to go over any, any sketchy territory, I would not want to go with anything coming out of the Denver International Airport. I'd be so afraid of like I'd be so afraid I'm so afraid of that place and anything going there. If I was going if I was going to Denver, I'd rather just drive. I'm very happy I was able to share the strangeness about this place. It makes me just, uncomfortable. If anything, just to know that I'm not fucking crazy for thinking this place is really weird. That's weird. Yeah. If if I went anywhere here at all, anywhere in Ohio, and I saw those paintings <laughs> leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> like, what kind of cultural awakening and also, like, giant slaughtering of nature and people? <laughs> and then, what? Like, I don't understand. Where am I? Like, am I, am I going on a flight? Did I fall or asleep I and wake die? up in, like, another dimension? I woke up in a dream and I can't get out. <laughs> I'm, yeah. surrounded, I'm surrounded by masons and I can't leave. This, it, it's such a scary little place. You go outside and there's a funny. It's also his huge. Eyes lit up. The Denver Inter- International Airport. It, I think it was originally planned to be the largest it looks, airport. It looks like it is, I think it is space. the third largest. You said there was going to be tunnels and stuff. Yes. They just didn't. Incomplete tunnels. There's incomplete tunnels. Yes. Just leading to nowhere. We don't know. We don't <laughs> know where they go. If you keep walking down where the tunnel, you're going to end up on Epstein Island. There? <laughs> If you keep walking down the tunnel, you're going to end up in Epstein Island. I'm pretty sure that... I, I can't remember if this is someone at work who said this, or if I was listening to something, but there is, like... Um, there's a theory that there are a network of tunnels beneath the Earth. I'm not entirely connected to Hollow Earth theory, but, like, sometimes people make the connection. You know, on the other podcast, I had a really fun conversation about the Hollow Earth theory. <laughs> But um, <laughs> that it's, 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 really it's the idea one. that there are a series of like tunnels underneath like the underneath the uh, the earth underneath like uh, I'm, whenever I say underneath the earth, I don't mean going like all the way through it. I yeah. mean like like a couple hundred feet underground, like going under the oceans and shit. Like, yeah, I, I think it's entirely possible for there to be mole people. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't disagree. Considering like. <clears throat> During certain wars, uh, there were like the little tunnels you could go into, and oftentimes people would just bury them. Yeah. Like there'd be. You, you can go under the ground, and there's little areas. You can go to little hidden bunkers, and you have to just climb through the dirt. Yeah. And sometimes, if they were found, and they had, didn't have any grenades or, you know, things they could just throw down there to kill everybody, they'd just bury it. And then when you're climbing through, you can't see where the exit used to be. Mm-hmm. There's like just more dirt. And the idea that people could have been trapped down there and died of exhaustion trying to dig themselves out, or just the fact that... That's horrifying. There is unexplored territory on the Earth. There are a lot of caves that we probably don't even know exist. And I really hate the idea... People could have explored down there, gotten lost, reproduced, kept reproducing. They don't have eyes. They're all white. They walk around all goofy. They don't know what <laughs> people it, are. You ever seen the movie The Descent? Yep, and it's incredible. Yep, that's exactly. exactly that's just... Yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh, it's horrifying to me the idea that there are just dead people like just like in trenches, like if you you're going through like a village in France, and uh, it's just like oh this used to be uh, where they fought during World War Two, and there's just like oh yeah they used to there's a bunch of people who who died in dugouts around here. I think I would shit my pants. Imagine you were walking through that field, and then or like a, it, it collapses under you, and you're just in a pile of the, bones. The Great Wall the of China. That's how so... how the emperor didn't give a shit. He just, he just, he just them literally the, yes, horrified. the dead the Don't dead would in. fall in, and then they would build the wall around them. That's horrifying. there were living people that had a wall built around them in there. Like yes, like living, people who just like just passed out. In there. Yeah, that's awful. That's terrifying. This is a fate worse than death. The Great Wall of China is so strange because at this point in time, it serves very little purpose. Like yeah. right now, it, I mean, if you wanted to get over it, 
It would not be difficult. Now, you, we have if planes. you wanted to go around it, it wouldn't be that difficult. Uh, but it's just like, it's a giant construction that we're keeping there for history's sake, even though it was awful, and there's probably things that we could use in there. You never know, like, you don't know what was put in there. Yeah, what kind of cool artifacts. There might be stuff that, like, maybe they dropped an old tool. We're like, shit, we didn't know they had those. There's a fucking drill in there. Look at that shit. Like, look in there, and there's tools that we didn't understand were things that we even thought of at the time. Especially because China was... China was incredibly a bit of a advanced. Powerhouse yeah, exactly. In China. Terms of technology ever since time. China has existed, it's basically been a, a world power, in the broadest sense of the word. Like yeah, you have uh, there are documented cases of like Romans interacting with Chinese uh, yeah. explorers and vice versa, and that's really interesting to me. They had the I think that they even had their own word for like uh, China. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. Shitland. If I if I was allowed to name places, like if I was allowed to explore and come back, like, yeah, that's Cumville. Go straight to fucking Cumville. <laughs> I've been actually entirely off topic, but goes with the idea of Greek people. Um, I've been listening to this audiobook. What is it? And it's about it's it's the the twelve major world religions. Oh. And I really like it, and it groups um. All of the religions with multiple gods. Polytheism? And, yeah, that's all into one. Like, every chapter is a different uh, religion. Mm-hmm. And instead of the big 12, there's like 11 of them, and the 12th one is all of those. Oh, okay. And like, the, the crazy... The 12th one the, is the catch-all. How the interaction between Greek and Roman people was like... So in depth that their religions meshed together, They're, like it melted into it, the other. Uh, the Greeks and the Persians are probably the the biggest areas around where Rome would have been established. Yeah. Um, one of the big theories of Rome is actually that it was established based off of um, Troy. Okay. From yeah. the uh, from the Iliad, Homer's Iliad, where it, it talks about a war between. Greece and Troy. It's entirely possible. The, the Trojan War is where Trojan horse comes from. Um, I was reading it, and like it's just uh, the way that he explains it. Like they were very open-minded and curious, mm -hmm. and that even whenever they were hostile, they were still learning. Like, what do you think everything's about? And they just kept adding those gods like to the list. Like, oh. And I slowly realized, oh shit, this, these ones are the same. Different names, same thing. So, you know, let's just kind of have it bridge. Or if there's something that they didn't think of... That's another thing they that use you... that god, like, oh shit, yeah, bring him in. We need that. And like, learning, about, and learning about <laughs> other religions, you, you see a lot of repeating themes. Yeah. Like, a lot of times, the, the godhead, you know, the major deity will be a god of the sky, or a god of, uh, you know... A chief deity would be like a god of storms or something like that. So it's it's really interesting not to say obviously you know that like if there is because there is a band out there 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 are bands of people who who believe in these gods but believe that they are the same beings interpreted by different peoples like Christianity, um, Islam, and Judaism are all they're all very very similar in the basic core idea they all have the same god they all have the old it, testament even whenever they talk yeah they all say we're talking about the same god yeah they it's all, all the they all god. say god but jesus was the messiah to the christians and muhammad was the yeah. final prophet that was like they, they were told who they were going to have from that same god you know but he's allah and then with um jewish people it's the same god but they believe that they are waiting for a Messiah, and he just hasn't come yet. That Muhammad was not, and Jesus was not. But they're still waiting for a Messiah that is told to them that it would come. And I just thought that was so insane. Like, I kind of knew that. But as I listened to the whole thing play out, like, man, they really, they're all, even they're, they're all aware that they're talking about the same being. Like, this, they all know this is the same God. Mm -hmm. And they all know of the prophet. Like, Christians don't dislike Muhammad. People that believe in Islam don't dislike Jesus Christ. He's just another prophet. Yeah, he's, he's, he's an element he of that religion. He was an earlier prophet to the Muhammad. Yeah. And 
even Jewish people are like, Muhammad and Jesus were prophets, but they were not the Messiah to them. And it's like, it's just kind of crazy how that plays out into everyone had a very similar idea of what's going on. And before that, you know, with even Nordic to Egyptian religion were very, very similar in the idea of like every element has a god. Yeah. Every thing I think that, that could happen has a god. I, I and they live so far away. They're so different. I think that that's just a fundamental part of human nature almost to, to want to prescribe meaning to to powerful natural phenomena. Yeah. Or, you know, just like if you look at Egyptian mythology, the chief deity is Ra, the sun mm-hmm. god, or um, sometimes it's like Osiris. Amun Ra, father of the gods. Father and, of the gods, and that is the sun god, that would be Ra. But yeah. It gets grouped into a bigger thing where he's like considered the father. But there's a football <clears throat> player named Amun Ra. What? His name is Amun Ra St. Brown. That's insane. His brother's name is Equinamius. Equinamius? I think. Equinamius. Equinamius, I'm pretty sure, St. Brown, yeah, but then there's Amon Ross, St. Brown. But whenever you look at the English names for the days of the week, you have a similar sort of compromise whenever they were trying to spread... Those names spread came from, was it Nordic? The Norse gods, yes. Yeah, it was Nordic gods. So, there. you have, um... Freya's Day. Yep. Uh, Freya's Day. So, I'll, I'll go through the days of the week and, and say which gods they are prescribed to. So, starting off on Tuesday, it's Tears Day, who is the uh, Norse god of justice. And then you have Wednesday, which is Woden's Day, which is an old uh, synonym for Odin. Odin is one of the, probably the most, one of the, one of the most widespread deities in, like, Europe. Yeah. Uh, Aside from, like, Zeus and Jupiter, I would say Odin is up there, because it all across northern... Uh, like, uh, the Celts have a different name for him, the Slavs have a different name for him, but it was, it was all, they all have the same sort of root, like, it's all, like, Woten, Woden, Odin. They're all talking about the same guy. Yeah, they're all talking about the same guy, basically. The religion it's to religion, just... there's, like, two groups, but they're all talking about, like, these, these four different religions are talking about one guy, these four are talking about the other but when those individual fours, they're all talking about the same guy. Yeah, exactly. They're all talking about the same thing. They just have different understandings and names. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy. Like, the fact that they never met, but they thought the same exact thing. All of them. Like, the entire race of them thought the same shit. The easiest explanation is there was probably a a proto-group of people that spread out into those territories that believed a similar similar thing, and then they all had different deviations on it. Like, if you look at English... Not to say the English is the same, but it's a similar process, the the spreading of language and the spreading yeah. of religion. If you look at English, in different parts of the United States, let alone different parts of the world, mm-hmm. you have different deviations on it. And yeah, I think like, that that's, that, that's a, I think a similar thing is very yeah, easily Spanish could have happened. Spanish is fun to me. Spanish talking like, if you're talking like Mexican Spanish to Cuban Spanish to, Spa- to Spanish Spanish, it's like they're all, they're all saying the same shit. But they all see it in different ways, and they ha- they're saying a different word. And yeah. that word is that word exists. They to have the different other ones. pronunciation and shit. Like a word in Mexican Spanish is a word in Spanish Spanish, but they mean different. Contextually, things. yeah. But they're saying the same thing. Yeah, exactly. They both know what they're saying, and that's how all of the all the religions kind of seem to be. Like I know what you're talking about, yeah. But that guy is not it. You're like, well, yeah, I think he is. Like, it's. <laughs> it, I always thought it was more different because wars are fought over it. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you think the same shit. You guys agree. You guys yeah, they, are just kind of confused. Yeah, like, they, they just think that their way is it. Yeah. They believe in different... Because, like, a lot of things that people that follow Islam think come from same things that people that believe in Christianity read. They just didn't take that... That specifically. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, they saw that, and they interpreted it Isn't different. Isn't that really interesting? That's and really interesting. And then they followed a different context. Yeah. They, they all saw the same it, thing. It, the different deviations, especially whenever you have Christianity or Judaism, the Abrahamic religions. Yeah. There's so many different ways that people interpret the texts that you get so many different, like, branching paths. Yeah. And, and it, it, makes, it, this... it makes a ton of sense to me whenever they all have the same base one. Like, it, it, it amazes me more... With um, all the different ones that have multiple gods, because they didn't have a common text or anything, they just all thought like, you know, 
Sun guy. I'm trying to crack my back. Oh, okay. But um, <laughs> but then you go to this where it's they all they all read the same thing, and they just everyone was like, no, I think it means you know so and so. I think it means something else. Another and thing then is... different groups will believe each of them, so on and so forth. And it's wild. It makes more sense now to me why there are so many different types yeah. of churches. Like, you go to four different Christian churches, they all believe completely different shit. Yeah, they shit. put different emphasis on different things. <clears throat> yeah, they all read the same thing. They all agree with each other in a certain way, but they see it differently. Yeah, it's it's just like, oh, I think that this element is, is something that should be focused on. Yeah. And then you build your important. congregation mm-hmm. around people who also believe in that. And you have another people who are like, no, I think <clears throat> that this is the, the element of importance. And you have people who focus on that. Um, but another going back to the Woden Odin thing. I think another thing is just simple, like, mishearing. Probably, you know, like, yeah. Like, hearing hearing the original pronunciation of the word and hearing or interpreting it in a different way mm-hmm. and like, or, like, writing it down. Yeah. I think that that is also uh, where the name could deviate a little. It's really weird whenever you, um, if you read other religious texts and you see a name and you're like, that seems familiar. And then you realize that is their interpretation of the uh-huh. name of someone that is in a text. Yeah, like text. Juan, John, those yeah, have the same they're root. They're the same. These, they, it was heard different. Well, it was it's just told John is the they're anglicized talking, version. Because um, in this, they talk about some of the recorded times that people realized that this is the same thing. That's really like, cool. When they started looking into it. Because for a long time, they just accepted these are different. But there's a certain point where they were like, wait a minute. Like, they're, this is the same fucking guy. They think it's the same guy. They just called him a different name. There was, like, this huge, like, oh, my God. We're, like, we're not disagreeing at all. This is the same thing. We're reading the same book. You guys just wrote it in a different way. Like, it's a different size, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Different font, but it's the same shit. And I also thought that was wild. But they all came to the same conclusion, taking different branches, coming from the same context. And it's like, what the fuck? Come on. That's why I can't believe any of them. I'm like, you guys <laughs> all think the same thing, but you're all wrong. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they're all <laughs> focusing on different different stuff. If you guys had a common ending, that would make it better. <laughs> if you guys all came to the same conclusion, I'd be happy. But you guys all came to different conclusions from the same context. Meaning, this is all there's independent also, thought. I'm not going to waste my time believing in your independent thought. There's also evidence that here and there, um, the even just like the King James... English version of the Bible mm. was edited by a third party at some point, probably. or maybe several third parties. Yeah, probably. More than likely. I would, I would, I would agree that that to is likely make the it case. Easier to control everyone. I don't. Probably partially and that. It's, it's very likely that. Definitely the... also probably just to change the narrative, because you would think that there would probably be parts here and there, to where maybe there were parts that made God seem more vulnerable. And yeah, we knew like, we know that, that the out. king, yeah, the king ain't having no vulnerability in his god if he's gonna spread this religion all over the fucking world. Yeah. It's like God kicks ass. And the thing is, <laughs> you know how long people believe in Christianity and couldn't even read the Bible because no one spoke it? It was written in Latin and no one read Latin. Yeah. When it got translated, it got translated because God read it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how possible it is that things got fucked? We might all think this, like, it, it might go even farther. We might, you know, we all have different conclusions. We might all have the same conclusion. But everyone, it was all interpreted by different people that didn't speak Latin. It's <laughs> so, like, no wonder we have common things and different endings. Because he kept running it through <laughs> Google Translate until it made no fucking sense. It's so, like, now it's all, all over the place. And we all have slightly different stories with all the different endings. And all the names are kind of fucked, but you get the idea. <laughs> and that's what yeah. everyone believes in. <laughs> it's wild. But, like, uh, going back to the days of the week, Thursday is probably the easiest of them all. Thor's Day. Yeah, Thor's Day. And then Friday is uh, Fre- uh, Freya's Day, or Freyr, which is Freya's brother hmm. and he was a god of fertility i'm more of a freya type yeah freya's pretty cool um weren't nordic gods the only ones whose statues had erect penises i remember hearing that freya the, freya all the other ones had, famously most of his statues had him with a big old dot a big old which is dick because every other like ancient statue 
or like statues Small. made of a. They have like tiny little like their fucking Flaccid. their pee pees resting. You want to know what the reason for that is? And then now, homeboy walks out with this fucking meat hammer hanging down to his shins, and you're like, oh my god. And a lot of uh, like Renaissance statues or Greek statues, you know, they used a- emulating people. that. Well, I mean that, and also <laughs> See, they didn't have hard dicks. They didn't. They were dead. Also, the thing is, they believed um, the Greeks believed that uh, a flaccid penis meant, or, or a, a small penis meant that they were chaste and in their right mind. So they weren't, like, hot-headed and stuff. Like you would be if you had a big, hard cock. I guess. I guess, yeah, I guess. It, uh, I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it really fucking struck me when I realized that a lot of Renaissance paintings and statues were made using... Cadavers. Fucking dead bodies. And I guess Most it makes of the sense. time, just unwilling. They just died, and you're like, oh, this is mine now. <laughs> Didn't snap that shit and hide it in your dungeon, and then paint as you go. It's not gonna move. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna move! <laughs> is, it gonna, and the, is it gonna protest? The, the crazy thing is, too, people learned so much about anatomy, because these guys would, they would, like, tear them apart. They would, they would strip the flesh from them and be like, oh, that's how these muscles work. Oh, okay. <laughs> think any of them did that, and like, what the fuck's under here? Ha! Ah! Oh! I kind of like, like, Ew! Ew! And he vomits on the, on the under the skin. It's, oh. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it would probably be pretty gross if you didn't know what the inside of a person was like. And then you found out for the first time. Like, oh, it's like meaty and red. What the uh, fuck's going on? It's all soft I remember soft the, the first time... The first time I figured out... Well, maybe not the first time. The first time you were inside of a person? No. (laughs) The first time I, like, figured out that, like, your insides were all squishy and red. Yeah. I was like, oh. We're just meat people. (laughs) You ever seen the people get in the accidents where they can see inside of themselves? Every one of them was like, huh. I see my little bones. Yeah, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) You got little bones in there. I looked down and he saw his intestine and he was like... (laughs) People freak out oddly less. I've learned this from Jesse. Probably people, also people, from shock. Yeah, you can probably see it and like, well, that's not supposed to be out there. <laughs> well, that's This an thing's issue. not supposed to be outside, is it? <laughs> you still don't have time to be afraid. You're can we put it back? Can, can you guys just put that back in? So that's what we're trying to do, Dude, sir. They're scooping like, <laughs> ah, fuck. We're trying. It's all outside. They're plunger. <laughs> they're like, they're like, Are you t- getting it in there? They're tucking it. Like, How do you feel? <laughs> Turn the tuck into whatever crevice they can get so they can fit more in there. Tucking it up into your do chest. You know, do you know that whenever they do brain surgery, they you, you are aware. They, they, and that's, they So you don't have any nerve endings in your brain. Yeah. You, you cannot feel, feel pain. Brain. But you can feel your skull and your skin, so they they um, they use anesthesia. Uh, they like a, a local anesthetic. They inject it, <laughs> and then it numbs that. But they they have to have you talking while they're doing brain surgery, so they know that they're not fucking things up, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. <laughs> because all of a sudden you start hearing like, like, oh, oh shit, no. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. What, what do they have to talk about? Just they just like, say how's things. Your day? They just they probably say just have things. Them read things or talk yeah, they about probably things. just have like <laughs> they a probably book. have like a text. Like, they say like, read this out loud or something like that. <laughs> but I know dude, that whenever dude, I prank the shit on my doctors, they're going, oh uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, yeah, fine, guys. <laughs> ah, you stinker. <laughs> they, they just go <laughs> and they stab it at the top of my brain. <laughs> they go, ah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they start pulling shit like, haha! Who has the final laugh now? They, pull, like, they, they, like, they, start, they start making me you move in the move around. Cortex. <laughs> they start making my arms move. <laughs> like, oh no! <laughs> they make you pop a big old boner. Like, you know what? Haha! <laughs> like, you know you what? like brain surgery. <laughs> like, what, what are you guys doing? <laughs> they just pull my frontal lobe and dangle it in front of me and toss it against the wall. <laughs> Go! Like, have fun feeling now, bitch. <laughs> They just slap the top of the skull back on. <laughs> they they twist it on. Yeah, they screw it on. They twist it on. And they paint the hair back on. And they send you on your way. Never, never tell the difference. <laughs> I like the idea that they have like, a screw top threaded like the top of your head. And they strip back Matt on. Matt and Ryan were talking once about like how cool it would be if like people worked like Lego people. You could just pop off your you hair. You snap it back on. Yeah. <laughs> you just pop your legs off. and like, I want new ones. <laughs> I have the hiccups now. Oh no! What thing? What was that? Dying. What was that? Dying. I mean, that. 
The idea of like having brain surgery and you piss your doctor off, so they start fucking with you. Like, <laughs> just, like, you piss surgeon, your pants now. The surgeon's like, hey, guess what? And you start shitting yourself. Like, Son of a bitch! <laughs> Fuck! And like, we're gonna have to postpone the surgery. And they send you home with pants full of shit. And, like, fucking <laughs> screw your head back on and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you start poking around like. I, I like the idea that like early science, like early surgeons, they get in the brain, they start like touching it, like what is. Th- Poke it. Guy's eye starts closing. It's like, oh! <laughs> start, poking, start poking all around. Cheat too. code. <laughs> Life hack. Open up your skull and hit your brain. I like the idea of, like, you press a part of the brain and one of their eyes starts <gasps> wandering off to the side a little bit. You're like, don't touch that one. Don't touch that one. You let it back up. What, what, what is terrifying? You get a and just start, like, going through. Like, what if I take this off? And the guy just... Boom. What's terrifying, <laughs> if, if, if you start going through... Like how surgery was in medieval times, you, uh, you Jesus, I'm sorry. You, uh, this is professional. And you, oh, uh, yeah. Every time I did surgery in medieval, times, I go, oh. <laughs> it's all this, all this fucking dumbass brain surgery talks got me with the hiccups. I feel like that's what, if, if I found out what was inside of a person in medieval times, I come, I'm like, ah, oh, sorry, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Just feed them more alcohol until they shut up She's and they losing start it. around. <laughs> But like, if you ever, if you ever get the chance, and you feel like not sleeping, <laughs> look into medieval surgery. Anyways. It, it was literally just like, what happens if I put a hole here? And the guy goes, ah, ah, I guess that, ah, I guess that didn't fix it. And they go, ah! And then, and then they just kind of left him there. He's like, yeah, here, drink more, go to sleep. Actually, don't. <laughs> Probably shouldn't what, sleep. What, I, what I'm really interested in is, like, how people are entitled to, like, drink milk. Who who's the motherfucker that went up to the cow and was just like, dude, what if I suckle on this? <laughs> <laughs> who made butter? Who was like, let, spin let, this let it let it sit there? <laughs> yeah, who made cheese? Like, well, it went bad, but I'm kind of hungry. So might as well not let it go to waste. You like spat in it, get that bacteria growing. <laughs> Guys, it's been three weeks. This milk's been in this dish, and now it's <gasps> solid and tasty. They're all like, "Ew, what the fuck?" And you go, mm-hmm. <laughs> "Who was the weird? Who's the weird South American man that just decided to eat the one with maggots in it?" They're like, "Yeah." <laughs> Everyone else there's like, "What the fuck are, are they you doing?" Eat- <laughs> oh, this this cheese has got mold all in it. Pog. Yeah, like, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> I like it when it starts turning other colors. Yeah, and that's how you got blue cheese. Some idiot ate moldy cheese, and, bleh, and they were just like, "Oh, this is delicious." I think Christianity might be rooted in uh, hallucinogenics. It wouldn't surprise me. Because, I mean, they used to just eat shit. I mean, a lot of early philosophers drank wine that was full of uh, hallucinogenic substances. I mean, which makes the, sense. The, I mean, when your Romans, job is to think, the to Romans, open your brain up. The Romans sweetened their wine with uh, lead. <laughs> there is a salt that you can make with lead that is very physically and chemically similar to sugar. It'll even taste sweet. It's kind of strange, and then it just fucks you up forever. Yes! Dumb. It lives in your bones and in your brain until you die. <laughs> uh, the thing That's why found, we don't have lead paint anymore, kids. They found blue water lily in, um, in old Egyptian uh, drinks and wines, and it is a very strong hallucinogenic if taken not to the extent in which you're poisoned, and they just got fucked up. <laughs> All the time. They just got fucked. And they thought about things. And I really like that. I really like the idea that... Ca- like, cavemen probably ate tons of mushrooms and started feeling funny. And they started throwing <laughs> shit on the walls. <laughs> like... I saw a water buffalo today. It looked like this. He, dr- <laughs> he spoke to me in weird languages. I like the idea he was like... They walk around like, ugh, ugh. And they eat a mushroom like... Yeah, yes. Kind of, like, it's- I saw a water buffalo. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember that episode of Regular Show... Where, where they they get the like the brain juice, yeah. and Rigby says more smarter, and they start speaking in like Latin, and no one can understand them. There's something about the idea of two cavemen sitting there, and one eats a mushroom. Oh yes, and he's like, oh, God, no. the sun rose from the east today. <laughs> it's just been pretty, doing that. That's just pretty good. And the other guy's like, oh. Gug. <laughs> he's like, I got I, I, I have to write. And he gets up and he starts drawing shit on the walls. And the other one's like, oh. oh. <laughs> Ah, no. Grabs a rock and beats him to death, <laughs> and then he eats one of the mushrooms too, and he's like, 
don't my brother, make what sense. I, my brother, what have I done? <laughs> oh, I, I must God. Finish drawing. But then he has to, Another like, caveman have, he, comes along. He just has to think through the rest of the drawing. Because he doesn't know what he saw. Yeah. So he's just guessing what the rest of the picture was, and it kept going this over is, This over is what I see. Through caveman and caveman, until eventually it's just this mumbled <laughs> mess. I'm like, what the fuck did this mean? Who was here? <laughs> he these caves, well, that's like, one thing I think drawing. is really funny, is um, cave paintings are just so boring. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, if you get past the idea that this thing is, like, hundreds of thousands of years old, it's, it's, it's just some, it's, animal. it's just, like, it's just a fucking oh. buffalo or gazelle. I can draw yeah. that shit, dude. <laughs> I did it in art class. Like, I, I can draw this. Spicy lady, don't end the recording. <laughs> Please. Spicy, end the recording. Oh. I, I'm amazed how well we were able to keep this somewhat on topic. <laughs> Just like in the gen, I think it's just because the <gasps> the corner of like conspiracy theories branches into so much other shit. Say yeah, I mean, it's just ideas. Say, so say something for the folks at home, spicy. Meow. <gasps> meow. Just a meow. Please. Meow. Meow. <laughs> meow. Not even that much from the great spicy lady. Whoa. Unfortunate. <laughs> Lucy, stop. <sighs> Jesus Christ! I'm, I'm pretty low on topics. I mean, after the after the caveman rant, my <laughs> my voice is kind of going. Well, I think that that's that's a good idea to end the podcast. Um, yeah, it's about it's the hour and a half mark. That's where I think that's where the last one was. Uh, and we didn't even get to go into aliens at all, so that's good. Well, yeah. that saves that topic for another day. Yeah. Possibly tomorrow. Possibly Tomorrow's tomorrow. Recording. Um, That'd be fun. I'm into that idea. Yeah, I so, can talk about aliens. That's one of my biggest fears. Shit, yeah. And you can talk about the green man. <laughs> you can, Save you, it for you, then. You can come, you can, you can, you can come huh? back to tomorrow's and we can have a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. I have one story. That's so, fine. That's all I really need. Yeah. So it's been real. Um, if you guys want to check out more of our stuff, uh, the plan is to post every Tuesday and Thursday. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if he makes it to Thursday. If I make it to Thursday. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, we have a revolving door of topic yes. topics. Jesus Christ, these hiccups are doing me no favors. Yeah, but we have a lot of ideas, a lot of potential topics and little games that we can play. Uh, I can play little games. <laughs> I do have ideas. I have a bunch of notes on my phone for little... Games that we could potentially play. I have old consoles. Well, I'm, I'm sure we can do stuff like that later. That um, sounds fun. <laughs> I didn't say no. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, we have tons of ideas and a lot of potential guests, depending on how schedules <clears> set up. And uh, hopefully this gets more and more put together as we figure out... <laughs> Yeah, maybe that. Maybe one day the the title will not be working title. Yeah, we can do away with the pauses. Maybe higher energy. We'd have to figure out timings and maybe a little bit of you know controlled substances. But you know, yeah. it should it should all end well. Yeah, I, I, I like the 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 progress in which we're going as it is right now. Let me check real quick how many views the first episode has. Probably it had, like, I'll call ten. It had six to my surprise um, the other day. That means they it has watched, ten. That means they watched like the whole thing, right? Ten in two you days. You have to watch a majority of it to get a view. Ten views in two days. Well, you can see who. Can you see who viewed it? Uh, I don't think so. It. That might be too much information. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> I know you know YouTube. I haven't listened to it, so it's not counting me. Did you edit it at all, or just post it? No, real I just posted post. it. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I think we would edit if. Uh, We'll start editing if things need edited. Like, yeah. If we start messing things up. So or... far, we haven't had too many long pauses or anything like that, or said anything awful or too stupid. I've gotten pretty close. Yeah. But that's okay. I've, I've I, I had a moment good. in the first one, too. I talked about shellfish. But, you know, that's <laughs> uh, we all get a little hateful Talk sometimes. About shellfish. Well, you remember. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, you don't? I don't. Well, I can show you once we're I done. I don't. I don't want to. I, I don't, <laughs> don't want to say that again. Did you, did you say like a slur for shellfish? Yeah. Okay, I remember. Uh, I think I remember what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's. <laughs> but anyways, guys. Um, so just make sure to tune in. This will be a Tuesday episode. 
Make sure to tune in in a couple days when we post our Thursday episode. Probably about aliens. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Depends Lucy, how I feel. Lucy. <laughs> Lucy, do you have anything to say? Yeah, Lucy, <laughs> Lucy, say something funny. She just farted while she was scratching. Oh, herself. no. <laughs> All right. Lucy <laughs> says fart. That means it's time to say goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.